I am so excited, y'all. I have somebody all the way from Kenya on the show today. I met this young lady on LinkedIn. I was actually on her show, and now I have the honor of having her on my show. Today, I have Miss Sheila in, in I'm going to say right, Mbogo Afande. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. The last one. <laughs> Yay! I'm excited. I actually uh, <laughs> practice it, so I'm excited about it. So before we jump in, into the episode, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit drop down below and hit that subscribe button. And then all of the things that we talk about today, the links to those things that have links will be down below. So make sure you check out the show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you share that with everybody that you know that can benefit from the valuable information we're about to get from Ms. Uh, Sheila here today. Also, um, please check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is it's my money underscore. I want to make sure you're checking that out as well. And if you're listening in, make sure you also drop to the show notes. And if you're not subscribed or following the page, make sure that you do that. My name is Petrina Dixon, and I am here as your personal finance coach, your it's my money lady. I'm here with Miss Sheila. Hey, Sheila. How are Hello, you? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I know. And Miss Sheila, like I told y'all, she have a lot going on. But you know, like over the last 17 months or so, we've been, you know, living in times that, you know, some of us have never lived in before. And she today is going to talk about how you can maintain financial wellness and invest during these unprecedented times that we're going through. And she is, we're going to share with you that just because that's happening doesn't mean you can't keep your money in order and have your money grow by investing. So with that, Ms. Sheila, what was the first tip that you would give to somebody that's going through what they're going through during these times about maintaining financial wellness? Thank you so much, Patrina. The first tip I would say is live within your means. Yes. Do not try to please anyone. Do not let social media give you pressure, but live within your means. Do what you can afford and what you cannot afford. It's okay to put a post and have it as a future goal. Why? When you live within your means, you are able to um, have mental peace, which is something we are all struggling with right now because of the whole pandemic and everything, as well as you are able to um, have that focus that you're not trying to please anyone, but you are trying to do your best. Remember, financial your financial journey is unique. It cannot be the same with anyone else. And that brings in the financial wellness aspect. You need to ensure you are holistically uh, able to enjoy your financial journey, which may not be similar to Patrina's financial journey. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, often, and I, and I say a similar thing, and that is personal finance is that it's personal. So what, how I one get in finances. So my income and what I need to pay out and how I'm trying to grow and where I am in my life is different from the next person. Right. So some people are Absolutely. saving for college. Some people are saving for, um, you know, their next home. Some people are saving for retirement. So it really depends. Um, and you have to remember exactly what she said. It. Don't let the pressures of social media dictate where, what you should be doing with your finances. So what's another tip, Ms. Sheila, that you want to share about maintaining financial wellness during this time? So another tip is ensure you have a budget. Mm. We always say a budget is a roadmap to your financial journey. Yes. Remember, it's a journey. The same way you're driving to a certain place, you need a map especially if it's a new place. You don't know what will happen to you, your finances in 20 years time. So a budget is able to help you map that out. So uh, we need to have a budget as much as we can. Now, I do understand there are people who cannot create a budget or stick to it. What happens to such people? you have to at least have a mechanism that can help you track your income and expenses, as well as your goals and investments. Absolutely. So that is the second one. 
Yes, and if you've been following me on any platform, you hear budget and budget and budget. And then if you don't like that word, you know, I always say to you all, then call it something else. Call it your money meeting, call it your spending plan, mm -hmm. but just make sure to Sheila's point, you have the mechanism to know where your money is going. Absolutely. So now people may be saying, all right, I'm trying to figure out this money thing during this time. It's really difficult for me. And then you now talk about investing during this time how can i begin to invest when i can't even i don't even have my money in order how do you bridge the gap for them on, on that topic thank you so much katrina you know um there's this saying that says when others are greedy be humble and when others are humble be greedy now this brings in the aspect of investing when everyone is fearing and you know they are so scared and they think like oh, i'm gonna run out of my money if i invest then that's the time you need to take advantage of such an opportunity mm -hmm. now if your finances are not yet in order trust me there's no point in life where all your finances will be fully in order wait we say that one more time say that one more time <laughs> And there's something we call opportunity cost. Now, this is where uh, you have to sacrifice something at the cost of something else. Mm. Trust me, Patrina, we all have something. When you review our budget, there's something we can sacrifice and that money we can invest. Now, I don't say we become stingy, but I'm just saying you can't be fragile so that you can have some money to uh to be able to invest another thing you can do i understand finances can be a roller coaster at this time you can choose to practice what you call delayed gratification whereby you can say instead of me having to go for vacation in the next three months how about that money i invest now then after six months after I've seen my investment, how it's performing, then I can go for vacation. So there's always a way you can play around with your money. There's always money to invest. It's only that we don't open our eyes wide enough to see it. Yeah, and that that's the actual beauty in a budget, right? It has you mm -hmm. spend, when you spend that 15, 20 minutes with it, you're actually becoming intimate with it. You're looking at it regularly. So you have a better, you're, you're in control. You're more empowered to determine what can I do now and what do mm -hmm. I need to wait to do later? And, and that budget will actually tell you that. So I love that. And delayed gratification is another thing that I talk about mm -hmm. all the time. I think you follow me, Ms. Sheila. And I. <laughs> so now, <laughs> you know, so you mentioned budgeting and investing mm -hmm. and talking, and you tied the investing to budgeting saying, review your budget, see where you could um, maybe do things differently so you have enough to invest. What are some tools that you would recommend for people to uh, use for budgeting? Uh, personally, uh, there are various tools, depends with the person uh, who, is, uh, who is using it, because there are people who are digitized, they can't write down expenses and income, they need a, a mobile app. Mm -hmm. There are others who like, they feel when I write it down, I feel the connection. Mm -hmm. So such people, you would say, you need to have a written down budget so that you can uh, be able to build that connection and relationship with your money. Remember financial wellness, one aspect of it is having a good relationship, a healthy relationship with money. Yeah. One way you build a, a healthy relationship is finding out ways on how you can budget in a fun way. And I love the fact that you said you don't have to call it a budget. You can call it anything. My money wins, you yeah. know, my smart money moves. So yeah. that's another thing. And then another tool you can use, of course, we have mobile apps. You can write it down. You can as well um, use um, maybe your card to just know how much expenses uh, you always spend. Then at the end, you check your statements at the end of the month. And another thing you can do is actually get an accountability partner mm -hmm. who you tell what you purchased. And then at the end of the month, they are like your accountant, you know, they come to you and tell you, okay, Miss Patrina, this month, you've been yellowing so much. This is, these are the figures. 
So you see the next month and uh, you will be able to at least think what have I been doing that uh, I need to reduce? That's another tool of budgeting in case you cannot do it on your own. And lastly, um, I will always say, you can start creating a spending journal, especially for beginners. Because um, sometimes a budget sounds like a big jargon. You can yeah. start with a spending journal. Every day, just jot down, I bought ice cream, I bought this. And then at the end of the month, you, you reconcile your money, um, what you've spent and what you uh, earned and what you are expecting to have. And that's just some of the tools that we can use to do budgeting. Yeah, and you know what? I love that you say go back and reconcile. And I, I, I talk about this in a way, write down what you actually spend. So even if you budget, your budget is your plan, but then life could happen, right? Like you could get a flat yeah. tire, you could something, you know, whatever, your child needs something that wasn't in your plan that you needed to take care of. So you have to go back and write what you actually did because it may be a little bit different than what you actually planned for. So I love that you use the reconcile part of it as well. So um, so you shared some tools, so paper and pen, um, apps are great. Um, any app that you would uh, share that uh, you use or you know of other people that use for budgeting? I think Mint, Mint is good. And, and I, I like its outlay and how simple it is to use, especially for millennials. You know, we, we want everything one click. Mm -hmm. You don't want to keep loading and searching for Wi-Fi and having so many details to fill in. So I, when I checked Mint, I liked it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've talked a lot about budgeting and spending plan and money meeting. So you want to give your quick definition of what, or what money, what budgeting is or what that process is. I normally tell people it's three steps, but what, how would you define what budgeting is for those that may not, they don't do it today and may want to consider doing this after listening to this episode? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to doing budgeting, we say the budget is a roadmap. So how do you get to do this? Number one, you have to sit down and have a money meeting. Mm -hmm. And just a highlight, do not try doing mental budgeting. Mm. You know that? Yes. Where you calculate everything in your head and yes. that's it. No, so you need to first of all have a money meeting, check how much income do you have, how much expenses do you have, and then uh, write down your goals. Now, once you've done that money meeting, the next step is for you to now look at your money personality. Do you love doing a written budget? Do you love using an app or do you love having someone to help you with it? Then after you've identified what kind of tool can work for you, now this is where the, 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 whole, um, the whole spice is doing it and actually following it. Now, this is where you have to be disciplined and at least be very strict with how you, uh, you handle money. Remember, money is a tool that can help or hurt you. So yeah. when it comes to action, ensure you follow your budget. And where uh, you, you find yourself you're not able to follow the budget, ensure you note it down so that in the next month, you are able to know how by how much did I go over my budget or by how much did I uh, underspend or go under my budget. And then finally, I only say have um, an emergency fund indicated in your budget because as Patrina said, sometimes your child can come and ask you something that was not in your budget. What yeah. will you do? You won't tell the child like, okay, it's not in my budget. I don't wanna hear of it. Mm -hmm. Some things are very, very crucial. We cannot overlook them. So have an emergency fund. Don't have a rigid budget. Mm -hmm. And as we wind up, it's important to celebrate every win that you have. And you need to indicate that in your budget. Yeah. So don't uh, create a budget. Then at the end, you destroy everything by overspending because you're celebrating. Exactly. So... Yeah, so have a, a section or have a way that you say, now since this month, this month I've stayed in my budget, 
what I'm gonna do as a way of celebrating myself, I'm gonna do charity work, or I'm going to go to this place, I'm going to do this for myself. It's okay. important to celebrate your small wins. And it is part of budgeting, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I love it. I love it. So you have dropped some gems here. Like, how did you get started? I know, you know, for me, people that follow me know my story. I got started because my stuff, my, I was not budgeting. My money was jacked up. I made a lot. I spent a lot. Um, my credit was horrible. And then when I got it right, I started to then teach it. For you, how did you get into personal finance? Tell us a little bit about you. Absolutely. You know, uh, for me, my story is um, a bit different because one thing is I found out my purpose first mm. and that is when I noticed like, okay, I love when it comes to anything to do with finance, I get tickled up and excited and you know, all that. So mm. I realized or I discovered that one, my purpose in finance, but that did not mean I didn't make financial mistakes. I did make quite a number of them. And just as you said, when I started to clean that up and I was able to do that, I sat down and said, now, I made all these mistakes and I've been able to, you know, over uh, them up. How about I help the next person yes. by getting into this, by doing this, uh, um, offering services. Those two were what inspired me to get into personal finance. And so far, so good. It's been a very fulfilling journey. Yeah, I, I, you know, I follow you as well. And I see your, see everything that you have going on. And, you know, it's great. Well, I love when um, people have um, not just the expertise from, you know, certifications and, you know, um, certificates and things of that certification certificate, same thing, but, you know, having um, the education to go with what they're doing, but also have the personal experience. So yours wasn't where you messed up like I did and, and, and learned it and then started to teach it. You knew a lot about it, but you made some mistakes. And I loved how you then wanted to take that and teach others so they won't make the same mistakes or they'd be a little, a, a lot more knowledgeable about the money topic um, as they go into it. So I love that you're now doing that with your expertise. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, you know, people, you're dropping a lot of gems. If you had to give two things to people about how to weather, I'll call it weather the storm. So going through what we're going through right now, having the unpredictable, like don't know if they'll have a job tomorrow. Those that already lost their job don't know when they'll find another. People whose businesses, small business owners are suffering. What would you give, one, one tip that you would give to them um, as it pertains to um, financial wellness and how to maybe get through that? And then the second tip on I, I, I got a little money, I'm trying to budget, I'm doing the things that you mentioned, but I wanna grow it by way of investing. What, what sort of tips you would give on both of those topics? Thank you very much. Actually, the first tip would be emergency fund. We cannot re-emphasize on this because we are in very unprecedented times. We don't know what will happen next. You, don't, you just don't know. So an emergency fund will caution you from having to go through all this stress that comes with money shocks. Mm -hmm. You can just wake up tomorrow and find like your shower has stopped working. <laughs> we are on quarantine, we are on lockdown. You have to, you know, buy things that were not in your budget. So an emergency fund is something we need to all have. Remember an emergency fund is the saving of about three to six months of your expenses. So try as much as possible to accumulate that fund and put it somewhere that is easily accessible. I've seen quite a number of people, they, uh, they create an emergency fund, but they put it in a savings account that they can only access after three years. And then oh, an, emergency, wow. an emergency pops up within six months. Now mm -hmm. what will you do? <laughs> you know? exactly. So it's important. Yeah, so it's important for every person to ensure wherever they're keeping the emergency fund, it's an accessible tool that they can access within maximum 48 hours yeah. so that it can really serve its purpose. Yeah, now, absolutely. the second tip, yes, please. No, I said absolutely, you're right. 
Yeah, and again, another way uh, just to highlight on the emergency fund, you don't have to give yourself pressure because I've seen some clients, they refuse to spend for a whole month. And when you ask them, what are you, why are you really uh, putting so much pressure on yourself? They're like, I'm trying to create an emergency fund. Please don't do that. <laughs> just include it in your budget and build it slowly. You don't have to, you know, um, sacrifice everything now just because you want to have an emergency fund. You might find you will not even enjoy it. So include it in your budget. Every month you channel some funds towards the emergency fund. Yeah, a lot now, oftentimes the, what I what I tell people is one, I'll try to have it automated. But the other thing is be intentional about growing it. To your point, I agree. Don't put pressures on yourself if your regular budget doesn't allow for you to, you know, put a lot of money every time you get my, your income into the emergency savings. But sometimes people will pick up what we call a side hustle in order mm -hmm. to um, intentionally pad their emergency fund. So some people here in the United States, they may drive for Uber, do that, mm -hmm. or DoorDash, Instacart, things like that to earn money outside of their regular income. And that earns um, side income is specifically for their emergency funds. So that's another way. So earn some uh, other income that's separate mm -hmm. from your regular income so that can help you achieve your emergency fund quicker. That's that's an, another option. Yeah, and actually, as you were just talking about it, another idea came to me. You can as well uh, do declutter and sell the things that you no longer use to get money to just uh, top up your emergency fund you know it doesn't have to always be serious and hard there yeah. are obvious ways you can use to come up with that fund and one way is if you have something that you're not using and it is still in good condition you can resell it and use that money as an emergency fund or build on your emergency fund Absolutely. now to then to the next topic on how people can, you know, grow their income and ensure they are having a cash flow. I think the first thing is we need to start embracing the idea of uh, having multiple income streams because. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And actually, let me add multiple passive income streams because. You can have income streams, but you have to be active 24 hours. You don't even have time for yourself. Exactly. So it's important. Well, let, let's, let's, let's stop right. Let me stop you right there. I think people, some people think when we say have multiple streams of income, that that means multiple jobs. Like for some, that may be what they need to do. But when we're describing multiple streams of income, it is not all active it's more of them passive than active but yeah i'm glad you brought that up go 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 ahead yeah you know there's nothing as sweet as making money while you're sleeping that is actually <laughs> <laughs> you know that is actually the whole thing of saying money is working for you instead of you working for money so it's important we start looking at ways on how we can create multiple passive income streams and most usually we usually say look at uh, it can be a business that you are not actively involved you can buy you can get into the stock market and um, you you don't have to be an active trader you can be a passive trader. You can as well look into um, government bills and bonds, like the treasury bills and bonds. You can also look into mutual funds. Yeah. Those are ways you can, you know, just invest and then you'll be getting some income, either as dividends, as profit, whichever way. As And, and as well, you can even become a partner in a uh, uh a shareholder in a business, but you're not actively involved, like yeah. just an investor. So when yeah. they make profit, they uh, they share the profit to you, and you don't have to be the admin, the CEO, the everything. No. <laughs> yeah, like so, Shark Tank. Do you have Shark Tank in um in in uh, Kenya? What the show Shark Tank? Yes, yes, we do have Shark Tank in our Yeah, so they invest, but they don't really work in the business. That's an example. 
Yes. And, you know, you don't have to be a millionaire to, to, to become part of a shark tank. We have so many uh, upcoming entrepreneurs who are looking for people to invest in their businesses or business ideas. You can do it. Actually, if you do it, especially peer to peer, it can be something worthwhile. And um, another thing I wanted to mention, aside from uh, multiple income streams, is we need to also... Um, learn to monetize our gifts mm. and talent. Yes. You know? Yes. Anything that comes easy for you, why don't you make money out of it? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I tell my mom says to me all the time, like, when, do you ever stop talking? I'm like, I get paid to talk. What do you mean? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's high time, especially this pandemic has shown us how things can change really quickly and okay. we have to adapt to change. But one thing I like about, about having a gift or a talent, nobody can take it away from you. No corona can take it away from you. You only need to harness it and know how you can monetize it to make an income for you. So those are the two major ones that are, uh, they can help you as a way of investing investing in other tools but also investing in yourself and be able to make money remember cash flow is king we cannot <laughs> forget that <laughs> i love you you're so right so you have <laughs> dropped some gems here miss lady and i love the fact that you and i have connected um again you had me on your show now you on mine so we have the the whole kenya united states uh international collab. yeah <laughs> collaboration going on i love it and i i, I am speaking it into a, an existence that um we'll work together on one of those uh with one of those you already know i'll just keep it i'll keep it secret right now you already know so uh exactly right so people listening my followers like to go check people out that's coming dropping gems how will they find you let them know what you have going on and how you would um where you would best like them to go check you out Thank you. They can find me on Facebook, Financial Wellness Center. They can also check me out on LinkedIn, Financial Wellness Center, and as well as Instagram, Financial Wellness Center. I do host a weekly show where I hosted Patrina, and she was super amazing. <laughs> um, it's called Wealth Wednesday Show, and uh, you can find us on YouTube by the name Financial Wellness with Sheila Mboga. We are also on Twitter, Financial Wellness Center. And always our in my inbox is always free. You can always drop me an email at uh, info at financialwellnesscenter.co.ke. Now what we have in store, we are rolling out a university students edition. We call it the campus money edition whereby we are reaching out to as many university students globally just to uh, share with them about financial education because most of us we made mistakes when we were in school you take a huge student loan debt then when you are done with school it's like you have a chain by the time you clear the student loan you are way too behind so mm -hmm. we are we are connecting up with every student in the in the university. If you are one of them, or you know someone, or you are a lecturer in a university, you can always hit me up. We see what you can do together. Awesome, I love it. And I I didn't realize that you were embarking on that. That's great. And I will that that leads me right into one. Thank you for being on the Money Exchange. I appreciate you. And the project that I have coming out next, I have two projects. By the time you hear this episode, they'll both be available. And one is, um, it's my Money Volume Two. That's specifically for uh people that of uh, of college age. So it's for ages nineteen to twenty five. In the intent of that book is for, I thought I had a copy right here, but it is, um, it's my money, a guided journal to help you manage your finances, volume two. And it's taking the person that um, is aged 19 through 25 or between that age span and walking mm -hmm. them through things that I think that would be pertinent to them to mm -hmm. learn 
at this point in time. And um, finance and college is in, in there as well, as well as um, entrepreneurship, um, budgeting, um, you know, savings accounts, secure credit cards. It is jam-packed with a bunch of different things. So that is project number one that's coming that aligns to what you're working with. So we'll have to talk offline about that. And then secondly, um, affiliates, which is another form of passive income. So if you're a mm -hmm. blogger, a podcaster, um, and you want to uh, earn, a, have another stream of income that's passive, you can become an affiliate. So I have a, an affiliate master course that's coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. That'll be dropping by the time you hear this episode as well. So with that, Ms. Sheila, thank you for being here. Again, my name is Petrina Dixon. I am known as the It's My Money Lady across social media. Uh, my Instagram is at it's my money underscore and everything that we talked about here today down below in the show notes, Ms. Sheila's stuff will be there as well. I have all of her links. Make sure that you check out our guests. Um, I know that if you're here listening, that means you're locked into me. I appreciate you. I want you to also check out and follow my guests as well because they are finance. They are my financial BFFs and they <laughs> uh, put out some really good information. And she is from Kenya. I'm so excited to have her on the show to have that international flavor to the money exchange. I'm excited about that so you heard it here check us out don't forget to go below in the show notes and i think it's over there hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already done so thanks again for keeping it locked here patrina dixon it's my money